The second step to mastering difficult conversations is the ability to describe the situation using completely objective language. Objectivity minimizes the chance of triggering a defensive response in others. Objectivity also ensures that what you say is indisputable. This prevents you from getting into fruitless, circular arguments over what someone may or may not have intended, and that's not helpful for making progress on the conversation. It's as if you are viewing things through a video camera, mostly things that you can either see or hear, or direct quotes of what someone said. For example, instead of saying, someone was dismissive, aggressive, or cut someone off. You could say, they rolled their eyes, spoke in a louder tone of voice, or started speaking before someone else finished. There are five types of pitfalls for non-objective language that commonly occur and that we need to watch out for. And they are characterizations, exaggerations, interpretations or mind reading, judgments, and assuming others' feelings. We'll go into detail of each of these one by one and show you some examples. So the first objectivity pitfall is to characterize people. For example, it's not objective to say, you were bossy. Instead, you can say, you assigned tasks without our input. It's not objective to say, you are lazy. Instead, you could say, you haven't finished your tasks for three weeks in a row. You can use direct quotes of what someone said. So for example, it's not objective to say, you are rude, but you can say, you rolled your eyes and called me an idiot. The second type of objectivity pitfall are exaggerations. So these are words such as never, always, extremely, etc. Some examples of exaggerations and their more objective replacements are, instead of saying, you always disagree with me. You could say, you've disagreed with me on my last three points. Instead of saying, you never ask for my opinion, you could say, I don't remember the last time you asked me for my opinion. The third objectivity pitfall is to make interpretations of what others did. Interpretations of others' actions or manner of speech is not objective. When you're interpreting the psychological meaning behind their actions, this can sound accusatory and trigger a defensive response. For example, if you say, you insulted me, someone could start disagreeing with whether they did or didn't insult you. Or if you said, you ignored me, they could say they weren't ignoring you, the meeting just ran out of time. These arguments over what someone did or didn't intend are not fruitful, and we want to avoid them by sticking to objective facts. So instead of saying, you ignored me, you can say, you didn't respond when I said hello, or you didn't call on me when I had my hand raised. Instead of saying, you insulted me, you could say, you pointed out my mistake in front of everyone, or you called me an idiot. Because remember, direct quotes are okay. The fourth pitfall are making judgments of things being good versus bad and right versus wrong. Judgments of things being good, bad, right, or wrong are often rather vague and subjective and it's not useful. Here, we're talking about subjective notions of right versus wrong, such as moral judgments or ideas of what is appropriate. We also use the terms right or wrong to be correct or incorrect. As long as it's referring to facts, then of course, this is objective and then okay to use. However, in these circumstances, it's often still better to use the terms correct versus incorrect rather than right or wrong. Here are some examples of judgments and their more objective replacements. For example, saying something was poorly done does not help someone know what needs to be improved. So instead of saying, your report was sloppy, you could say, your report had many spelling mistakes. Instead of saying, your presentation made no sense, you could say, I couldn't follow the transitions between the different slides in your presentation. Finally, we have our fifth pitfall, which is to assume someone else's feelings. Never assume how someone is feeling, no matter how sure you are or how obvious you think it is that they're feeling a certain way. Sometimes you might want to ask if someone felt a certain way or communicate that someone gave you the impression of having a feeling in order to open up a discussion. Make sure you emphasize that this is only a guess and be very clear that you're inviting further discussion. For example, you don't want to say, I know you were upset, but you could say, I wondered if that upset you. As a final note, 
If you want to communicate a subjective opinion, clearly communicate that this is only your preference. Remember to make sure that your description of the situation is still objective. For example, don't say, you were incoherent. Instead, you can say, I couldn't understand what you said. Don't say, you were abrupt. Instead, you could say, your response is more brief than I'm comfortable with.